chapter 19, the continuation of the uh, things we were talking about uh, concerning uh, um, the moving of the Spirit and the baptism of repentance, the things that, that uh, uh, um, John the Baptist was called into question. If you remember, we talked about that. Uh, Paul distinguished between the baptism of John and the baptism in the name of Jesus. Uh, into John's baptism. John indeed baptized uh, the, this uh, baptism of repentance that we, we knew Paul addressed. And uh, we, we, we saw the difference being made between the two. Um, when the men are called disciples without further qualification... Um, th th this, this is all part of the questions here and involving uh, of uh, the disciples, not only of John the Baptist, but now clearly Paul's addressing them to be disciples following Christ. So that's what we need to look at uh, tonight. And, and in verse uh, 5 of chapter 19, it tells us uh, a little bit about this. The, the, the Ephesian disciples who believe on Jesus are baptized and receive the Holy Spirit with gifts. And remember, I left it go at that uh, last time that we would talk about these things here tonight. Um, uh, verse 5 says, when they heard this. If you remember what he said in verse, uh, verse 4 is why, he's, uh, uh, why this is being stated. And, and in verse 4, it actually says... Um, Three and four, actually. We'll go back to that. Three and four. And, and review that. Yeah, he said to them, Into what were you baptized? Just so we're clear on this discussion. They said, Into John's baptism. That's verse three. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. So when... When we look at that, uh, we now understand as going forward in verse 5, the discussion and why this discussion happens. Verse 5 says, when they heard this, okay, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So obviously right from the start, there seems to be a difference, doesn't there? Okay. And Paul, when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, what happened? They spoke with tongues and they prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Okay? So again, uh, Paul, as Luke writes, addresses uh, the situation of salvation. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and having been completely prepared by their response you remember to the preaching of John the Baptist prior to this they were now ready to embrace Jesus fully and they were baptized in the name of Jesus so we need to talk about some of this stuff because is it, it, it apparently it, it shows us they're not the same correct is that what you see Obviously, it's being pointed out that this is apparently two different events that's happening. Two different processes of happening. Two different uh, possibilities of happening. However you want to say it. But, but again, baptizing in John, baptizing in the Lord. So, we, we don't have to worry about being baptized in John anymore, do we? That, that's not something that's, that's in our time. Even though there are some denominations that still try to get you to be baptized into their denomination. Some of the same kind of thing. But again, that baptism relates to that. But we, we have to understand that the true baptism is to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? That's first and foremost. And that's what we should seek to have. And, and, and notice um, as, as this is happening... And, and, 5, 6, and 7 clearly tells us what happened. Paul did what? What did Paul do? He laid hands on them. He laid hands on them. Okay? Doesn't mean he took them by the throat. Doesn't mean they 
beat him to a pulp. Okay, some, some other references, it, it says they laid hands on Paul. Well, that's what they were doing. They, they, they really was trying to hurt him. That's not what's happening here. Paul's not laying hands on to, to hurt somebody or to grab them and throw them in prison. He's laying hands on because that's what we have been instructed to do as a Christian, to pray for somebody. So he's laying hands on these people for the purpose of praying for them and praying for them specifically to receive the baptism of Jesus. Okay? And, and, and obviously, when, when he says he laid hand on them, what happens? The Holy Spirit came upon them. So tell me why, why is it many want to discredit this kind of event happening with us who are Christians and believe in Jesus? Why is it we don't want to be prayed for and laid hands on to receive the Holy Spirit? Why is it we don't look at this as being something that, that happens when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Is there a difference? Is the same? Should we look at it differently? Should, should we not look at it in this way? See, these are all questions that, that rise up here. And, 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 and it tells us that, that they were baptized as Paul laid hands on them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And obviously they, they, they received gifts. When you're in the presence of the Lord. That's what happens. Supernatural things. The Holy Spirit's moving and working. And when you're in His presence, see, uh, as Paul's addressing, he also wrote the letters of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. And, 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 and we can study all that during his stay in Ephesus. And it was during this time that, that in 1st Corinthians that Paul wrote uh, uh, much in detail about the working of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I, I dare to say, without the Holy Spirit, there, there is no church. There's nothing. So without the presence of the Lord, okay, how, how, how are we equipped? How can we persevere? Yes, Teresa. Certainly. And obviously that, that, that seems to be a mindset of, of many that, just like you said, Father, Son, but where's the Holy Spirit? And, and, and I, I dare to say again that, that without the presence, which is the Holy Spirit, that, then what do we have? See, we're, we're just left on our own devices. We have no power. We have no, no ability. We have no, no gift. We have no understanding. We have no discer discernment. We, we, can't even, we can't even dispel darkness without the Holy Spirit. Yes, John. Amen. Amen. And it happened, didn't it? He said he had to go before we could receive. The one is the comforter, the one who, and, and this is where we uh, uh, get uh, the, the uh, words that John writes in John 3, you must be born again, okay? And, and we already had the, the difference between John the Baptist, John the Baptist who baptized with water, that, that's, that's the representation of, of flesh. But Jesus, as we know, is clearly different, it's baptism of the Spirit. So, so they, they go hand in hand, but, but we, we, we have to understand this is, not, this is not the same as John's baptism, okay? 
This is clearly a different event in, in, in happening, okay? So it tells us what happened, and it clearly says. So what did, what's it mean when they spoke in tongues and they prophesied? What does that mean? It was a symbol that they really were Christians. Okay. It was evidence, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Clearly evidence of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and when there's evidence of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit's alive and allowed to, it, it becomes a powerful thing where people's lives get changed. Chains get broken. That's what I love. The chains get broken yeah. when we want to be in the presence of God. If we don't and we discredit God's moving and we discredit the Holy Spirit's work, of course, you're never going to receive anything. It's not going to be there. So again, um, it tells us that, 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 that there were, uh, it says 12 in all uh, were here. Um, obviously, this isn't all the people. It obviously w wouldn't be the entire church at Ephesus. Um, so again, this is almost getting back to a smaller group again. And why would that be? See, see, some people have this idea that you have no choice about the Holy Spirit. Huh? Free will. But we do have free will. And again, this is why it happens for some, but don't happen for others. This is free will. It doesn't mean God has changed. It doesn't mean God favors one over the other. It don't mean that, 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 that God has, has chosen someone special. No. It has to do with our free will. It goes back again to how close do I want Him? How close do I want the Lord in my life? How close do I want His presence? Do I really want to be in His presence? You see? That's how you begin to decipher what is really going to happen in your spiritual life. How close do I really want to be? How close do I want him to be? See? And if I want him close, I promise you, you'll experience, you'll experience the moving of the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. Okay? And, then, and there's times where, where it's happened where you don't even know why you're saying what you're saying because God already does. There's something at work that he's already doing. Same thing that's happening here. This is why it says prophesying as well as speaking in tongues. Prophesying, meaning God's giving the message to his people. Okay? And so this is happening. And again, this is the disciples. They, they, were, they were obviously a part of the company of, of the, uh, the Christians at Ephesus. Um, it was not all. They, they, they were baptized again in water. But, but at, at, at this time, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Far more powerful. Okay? Um, you have anything else you want to say about that? Anybody have any questions anymore? What, what is it that happened here? We have to realize this, okay? Anybody have any thoughts on that? Do you think that, that God wants us to not be close to Him? He wants us close. He wants us to know everything about him. But you see, just like he's, he's made it known, with, with, if, if, I'm, if I'm resistant, he's not going to do anything. I have to be totally open to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, to be welcoming the Spirit, the presence, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit into my life. If, I, if I'm not open, it ain't happening. Because it's free will. Okay? Um, the other thing is, um, we, we have to remember this. We, there, there's, there's clearly, clearly something that has, has to happen in our lives first. Huh? Repentance. Repentance. Repentance then leads us to what? Salvation. Salvation then leads us to what? 
Being born again and getting closer to the Lord, isn't it? So it's at that point where, okay, do you want the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life? See, that's what this is about. And if I'm still there, like, well, you know, hold on. Hold on. I'm not so sure about this. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit's not going any further. But if I'm saying, oh, I'm wide open, Lord. Take me all. Let me have it all. Let me be with you. Let me be in your presence. Lord, pour it out. There's a total different mindset because now I'm open. I have to be open. I can't be resistance of anything. And it's always, it's, it's troubling as well. Because the Holy Spirit can set us free. Holy Spirit can get us through difficult times. The Holy Spirit can work in our lives. The Holy Spirit can turn that mountain into a valley. Into a flat plain. That all, the Holy Spirit can change my whole, my whole uh, 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 situation of life that's just, that is just so exasperating into one of victory and peace. The only reason it don't happen is why? Pointed at my, me. Me, 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 me again. Okay? There, you had your hand up there. in the book of John. Amen. struggle. You're the only one, buddy. Mm, amen. Amen.
Certainly. Well, absolutely. And, and that's, no. That, that's, that's the words we know of the Holy Spirit, the, help, help, the helper, the, the comforter. I mean, those, those, that's what the Holy Spirit does. See, that way you can smile in the midst of adversity. Smile in the midst of the battle. You can still rejoice because we have victory. That, that's, that's what the Holy Spirit's job is. That's what, but along with what you're saying, that's why I say, without the Holy Spirit, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I can't persevere. We need the Holy Spirit to give us that strength. So absolutely, yes, Teresa. Amen. I wouldn't want to be without his gifts. I wouldn't want to be without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Well, isn't it, say, isn't it also like saying, I'm a Christian, but I believe in abortion? How is that possible? So if I discredit this part of the Bible, but yet I say I'm a Christian, but yet these things I don't agree with or don't, I, I don't uh, adhere to, I, I don't accept the, the, the supernatural things of the Spirit, I don't accept the, the gifts of the Spirit, to me it's the same as saying I'm a Christian and, and I, I'm, I'm pro-abortion. Amen. We saw his mom come from death to life. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a miracle. Yes, it is. This is your witness to this church. There's miracles happening. There's miracles happening. God's spirit is alive. Wake up. Amen. That only happens because of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And if I would ask the question, and I, I mean to be honest, I want... To say, if I was honest with myself, if I truly would be honest with myself, and I ask this question, are you where you want to be with the Lord Jesus right now? Have you within yourself, and can you within yourself, say with ultimate conviction, without, okay, with, I should say with the understanding that the Lord knows our hearts. Can I honestly say I really am as close to the Lord as I really can be because that's what I want. You see? And that's, that's where we have to get to the nitty gritty because, and unfortunately, many people can't answer that. That's why when somebody asks me anymore, I said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing everything the Lord wants me to do. 
Because that's how I feel. I, I'm doing that. And, 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 and you know what? It's not always received by everyone. But I've also known, as we even study the Acts with the Apostle Paul, unfortunately, even ones who say they're religious don't get, don't understand, don't have a desire for the presence of God. The Holy Spirit has to be with me or I'm dead. I can't persevere. I can't carry on. I can't continue because I, I have so much opposition. And, and I, I don't want to make it about me, but I, I, I want you to know the battle that's happening in our world is truly a spiritual battle. And, and when somebody is, is strong in their conviction and speaking it clearly, Satan don't like that. So we have to realize as a Christian, if I, if I am what we're talking about with Paul and, and, and what's happening here at Ephesus and, and what happens at other places where, where the Holy Spirit of God is so real in someone's life, you have to know Satan's going to try to cause confusion. He's going to try to trip up whoever he can trip up. That's why we have to be strong in his word and be filled with the Spirit. That's the only way you can get through. It's so exasperating. Believe me. Day after day after day after day. Moment every hour, every hour, every minute. So you, we, we have to have. Back to Daryl's ex explanation and Denise. We, we, without that presence. The presence. Of our Lord. Our whole, the Holy Spirit in our life. As a human, you, you can't go on. See? So there, there's so much to be troubled. But this is why I believe that, that, that uh, we, we, we have this desire to go deeper. If I ask anybody, we'd like to be deeper. We'd like to be closer. But I always was go back to say, well, why aren't we? Why don't we? What is holding us from going closer, getting deeper? What is holding us back from just giving the Lord everything? Even our fear. Yes, there. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says it doesn't. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. It is. That's 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 the, the battle we have, isn't it? And, and Alan said about we 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 it is unfortunately boils down to we want to be in control. And, and so do we learn to, to resist what we should and accept what we should. That's so important. Yes, Therese.
Amen. It, 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 I will have to say, it was the faith of her mother. Kim knows that. And, but I, obviously, Kim, Kim uh, put her faith in the Lord as well. But there was a real wrestling within in that hospital room and within this, this family. And it was her mother. Her mother who said, you know, no, I'm going to trust God for whatever it is. She has a, quite a testimony, I'm telling you. But we're, she, she's been talking and we've been talking and eventually one day she's going to share it. But we, we're just putting it in a hole. But... Obviously, we know, and of course, Kim, Al, and their family, the strength came from trusting the Lord. But Jean never wavered. She never wavered. She was, she was straightforward the whole time what she was putting her faith in. Praise God. It was a miracle. Amen. You see, if, 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 here's the thing, and this is some of what we're talking about a little bit here. If somebody doesn't have the understanding of the presence of God in our life, it's hard to get through things like this. But when you begin to understand the, the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of the presence of the Lord Jesus, the power of his presence in our life, those obstacles are, are soon disappeared. Peace is a result, isn't it? And, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. He's the comforter. He's, he's the one who gives us that strength, that peace. He's the one. So that's why it's so important as we're talking about. If... if, if if, if somebody doesn't have that, in fact, what Daryl's saying, there, if there's not an understanding of that, or if it's foreign to somebody who doesn't have the, 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 the experience, if you want to say, or the under knowledge of, or, or had, had the moment of, that it's hard to understand what the presence of the Lord does. Same as the D say, overcoming fear, overcoming those things that and as, as Heather said, we, we have to know this. This is why being in the presence of the Lord is so important. And you know, we don't... Yes, go ahead. Galatians 2.20. Absolutely. It's been a little while. He lived, but Christ lives in me. In me. In the life which I now live, I live according to God's law, not on me. Amen. Amen. If we remember that, huh? Alive in Christ. And if we really believe that, I think we'd be different people. Amen. Amen. And along with that, Paul says we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if, if Christ lives in us, mm -hmm. we have this, don't we? That inner peace, yeah. that strength. So we can overcome. Mm -hmm. See? And, and, and I, I marvel at ones who are going through cancer and through all the pain and suffering they've been through. And I've watched them over the years, and I can see the ones that are strong in their faith. They have a smile on their face. They're not wanting attention. They're just saying, Lord, whatever you give me. I marvel at somebody who's able to find that peace, knowing that God is in them, with them, and it's going to be sooner than later. I'll be in his presence. Wonderful. You see? What a great place to be. We're not stressed about it. We're not consumed about it. We're not worried about it. We're just saying, Lord, whatever it's to be. And, and, and this is what we're talking about with, with this. And um, the, the, the uh, uh, dwelling of the Spirit here. And, and, and if you have it, you know it, don't you? If you have it, you know it. And, and some people can't explain it. Well, then I say, well, then you don't have it. But when you have the presence and the filling of the Spirit, you know it. You feel it. You know He's there. You comfort. Gets you through everything, don't it? So this is what we have to remember. That, 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 that there isn't something uh, to hope about, you know. Uh, one can know if they're filled with the Spirit. One can know just by uh, what happens. So 
We're praying for Friday. For, for that, you all and the whole courtroom to be filled with the presence of the Lord. In truth and power. And, and, and that's what we need to look at. So, uh, I think, any other questions on that? We're already getting time here. But I, I pick it up here maybe in our next segment. But uh, you have any other thoughts on, on, on anything? Any uh, suggestions? But I, I often would think about Jesus too. It says he goes off by himself or he's praying or he was led by the Spirit. And I often thought, well, what was he hearing differently than us? Because we understand the connection with him through the Holy Spirit. So what was he here? You see? But we have to remember he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. The manifestation of the Messiah is what we see in Jesus. But the Heavenly Father and His Spirit is still the same. But I often thought about this. Okay, Jesus was led, it says, by the Spirit. He was led off to pray. He was spent time in prayer. For, for, for days, I mean, even 40 days, by himself, where was he? We have, no, we, have no, we have no other writing except maybe the desert or wilderness. But what happened in those days? Yeah. He was in the presence of the Lord. He was in the presence of the Lord. He was presence of God. He was in the presence. Yes. Powerful if we get into his presence. It's powerful. Yes, Wayne. It is. Amen. Amen. People are attempting to. I got I got an email 